the common microwave. In a way, this is one of my most requested videos because a previous video I did on how to scrap a microwave left many people asking, how much do you actually make from scrapping a microwave? So we'll dive back in and answer that once and for all here. Like many other things, disassembly starts with all the screws, but there are also these security bits. If you have a set that includes security bits, you can remove them that way. But don't feel like you have to. Now this shroud looks like stainless steel, and it is. But if we check with a magnet, we find that it is magnetic. This means that it's likely 400 series, rather than stainless 304 or stainless 316, the types scrapyards typically sort for. Now inside is pretty simple, but there are a couple hazards to be aware of. And I'd like to take the opportunity to point those out after we've removed all the wires here. So the first one is inside this, the magnetron. And it's right there, that pink ceramic ring. So pulling this apart is fairly simple and there's a little bit of copper in there, which we'll get to. Um, but we want to carefully remove this magnet and this little bit of brass because that pink ceramic is often a beryllium oxide compound which is extremely toxic if it were to get cut or shattered and turn into a fine particulate. You do not want to breathe that in. I don't know what the long-term health effects are, but uh, it shortens your life a lot. So we'll wrap that up in a piece of tape just to be safe. I don't really care to take these things apart usually because there's not much to them. That's steel, and there's this little bit of aluminum, which is very difficult to remove, and not very valuable. But this is where you pull the two magnets, which people are often fond of, but they are quite brittle. We'll set those aside. And other than that, there's just these two little bits of copper, which are not bad, um, but you can uh, wrestle the, the cap off of the one end. But I'll pull these out and just to demonstrate, we could cut those off right there. And if we did, we'd only be losing a little, little bit. So the struggle with that cap isn't really necessary. And there, the only valuable things out of a magnetron. And the rest of the components can be gently persuaded out. And this component here is the transformer, and it's one of two designs. Um, this is definitely the less exciting type of microwave, which is unfortunate, but a good example nonetheless. Now, outside of this business end of the machine, there's really only one spot with anything worth grabbing. And that is under here. There's one more motor. And it's a small one, but it's easy to get to. Now we've got a convenient bucket for steel. Now these ferrite beads are primarily made of iron, same as the magnets. So if you're not keeping the magnets, those can really just go in the bin with all the other steel. And there is another more compelling design, and hopefully one of these will be a good example. Crack these open just like the previous one, and yes, both of them have the other design that we were hoping to see. It's these big, chunky transformers. Those are what we want. However, they come with the other potential hazard, this large capacitor right beside them. Now, if this capacitor was charged up, it would be a serious shock risk that could really hurt you, which is why they have these, uh, these discharge resistors built right into them, so that if it's turned off, it discharges its electricity. But just in case that wasn't present or wasn't functioning, we can bridge both sides together with an insulated screwdriver, and that should short them out and release any stored electricity. Now, with that out of the way, we can pull these out, and hopefully one of them will be the money piece we were looking for. Before going any further, we want to check 
they've got two sides to the windings, and the one with the thicker windings is pretty much always aluminum, which you can see by the color. But then the other side, if we scrape it a bit, we can see that this one is actually copper windings. It's common for modern microwaves to have both sides aluminum windings. But surprisingly, it turns out both of these actually have a copper round side, so that's convenient. If both sides were aluminum, they would not be worth continuing disassembly. But if one is, disassembly is pretty simple. If we just beat the heck out of the one weld, we can break it apart and expose the windings inside, which will then be pretty simple to pound out. These are some of the easiest transformers to scrap. I'll peel the paper away. Now, this is probably not necessary. You're likely to get the same price for the copper, even with the extra paper on, because it's not going to be clean. But here's the rest of the components, and these are pretty much the same in every microwave. There's a couple of these switches which you could crack open for silver recovery, and then in the magnetron we've got these little bits of copper and brass, a bunch of number two insulated wire, a power cord, and two types of motors. Those aren't bad. And then a bunch of uh, components on the small boards. These little, I'm not sure what those ferrite beads wrapped in copper are, and then these things which look like relays, uh, but they aren't all relays. These resin filled ones, if you crack them open, they're not very exciting. But these other ones without resin, you can find this little barrel of uh, copper windings. I'm not saying it's worth it, um, but these ones, these little wound ferrite hoops, the copper on that actually weighs quite a bit, probably more than all the other small components combined. So I like to grab them when I see them. Now, this little motor, uh, I didn't get my camera centered, but it's not welded in, so you can just hammer it out. Try not to destroy it, because if it's crushed, it makes it a lot harder to pull the, uh, the core out of it. And then you can just pull the, uh, the windings off. Pretty simple. Kind of fun. And this little biscuit is, you know, pretty simple. We've done these before, but if you're not familiar, they're pretty straightforward. Bend the tabs out of the way, pull the, the junk out of the center, and you'll have this little, this little flat wound copper motor. There's not a lot in them, but hey, if, if it's already right in front of you, they're pretty simple. Same as these little barrel-shaped ones. Not that hard to take apart, and kind of fun to pull the windings off. So, now we've got that little pile of angel hair. And that is our yield. We'll find that in pretty much any microwave. The part that's different is here. This is the transformer. Smaller, lighter, and contains a lot less copper. But it's also really quick and easy to take apart, so I'm not complaining. So there. Total yield from one microwave. Oh, not quite. There's also the power cord, which, for the sake of completion, I am going to strip. This is a pretty small gauge, though, and normally I wouldn't bother stripping this. But it's not my job to tell you what's worth it and what's not. So there, one microwave. And let's do it to the other two. There it is. So, for sake of comparison, let's get into it. Now the weights on some of these are going to be so small they're inconsequential, so we'll just get an average out of them. The mixed wire, you know, a half pound of mix number two. Now these tiny transformers, quarter of a pound, that means they're like 10 cents each. But let's get into the good part. This is the all of the copper from the smaller surrounding components, but not the transformer. Pretty similar, although the first one we did does have a little bit more. But when we compare the transformers, it gets wildly different. Ten times as much in the other ones. More than a full pound. And then the aluminum is pretty much the same, because clean extruded aluminum is worth twice as much as uh, dirty uh, old aluminum. But to help visualize the total yield, and because it's fun,
That popping sound just means I need to clean my torch tip. I think. I turned it down a little bit. Don't worry, it'll be back. Oh, there it is. Ah, my favorite part. Full disclosure, that was a terrible and very cold pour. I ended up remelting it. Not a bad little cookie. Now watch as I make a terrible decision. I mean, yeah, it's a little big, but it should lose volume and weight because it's got all that, that glue and it's all like thin windings packed together. It should be fine. He said to himself, with nothing left at this point but denial. But it was not fine. We'd better try something else. Now this is the only copper crucible I have, and it's a little big to do these one at a time. So we'll just have to pile them both in and average them out. Their weights were pretty much the same. After giving it some time to cook, we are ready. I knew I was going to be remelting that about halfway through the pour, so all I could really do at that point was commit. That one, however, was a beautiful pour. After a quick burnish with a wire wheel, just came out not too bad. Oh, that's the little one. Now I could polish and sand, but they're just going to oxidize in a week anyway. So it's not going to really make a difference. Now these ones aren't too bad. That first one is actually probably the nicest bar I've ever poured. And for a rough guess, they're pretty close in size too. So hey, pats on back.
For comparison though, the first microwave with the lighter style transformer, just shy of 200 grams or just under a half a pound. Total copper. The whole thing. Ooh. Okay. Those are hot. Those are still hot. There's these ones. Almost three pounds together. Or just over 1,200 grams. Let's see how close I was. 670. And 550. Okay, so I was pretty far off. They're not exactly half and half. But 1.2 kilos. Adding in the steel, 42 kilos, or 93 pounds total. It's about 30 pounds in steel. And just over 3 pounds of copper total. I'll come up with a table to show how that looks, but what I've been saying this whole time has basically been true. They're about 5 bucks each. As long as you don't get one of the ones where the transformer is aluminum windings on both sides. I think that's a pretty definitive answer. How much copper is in a microwave? How much is it worth in scrap? However you want to say it. Like and subscribe for more scrap metal content. I'll see you on the next one. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.